Welcome back to your pick a card. Now including your zodiac ruins, okay? So you can choose by the card deck, the crystal, or zodiac sign. We have quartz crystal with the sacred activation cards. We have Hekamar diamond with the wild unknown alchemy cards. Obsidian with the Somnia deck and we have selenite with the traditional vintage tarot because i forgot the name but they're my favorites so uh, we also have pisces gemini leo aquarius sagittarius aries libra capricorn scorpio virgo cancer and taurus i will give you a moment because this is a lot <laughs> to make your selection and if you need more time than what's provided, feel free to pause the video. For more information on products and services, you can visit astronauthoochie.etsy.com. And I will give you guys a moment to make your selections. Now, throughout the video, I will pull from your deck and include additional cards that will shuffle out live the information should be in the description box and it is time stamped if you resonate with more than one stone or have questions regarding more than one zodiac feel free to watch as many videos as you'd like now i'll be honest and say that overall for general messages I love this deck it's like the higher ups it's if you're into the chakras um, crystals like higher vibrational you know guides ascended masters here you go alchemy is like mysticism it gives what we need for our personal journeys and manifestations, um, giving advice. Oh my God, they're just great, okay? Now the Somnia deck was my newest favorite. Okay, these two were like my latest favorites. These are like my old school favorites. The Somnia deck is beautiful. It's real life photography um, by Nicholas Bruno and he is amazing. So I love this for the quality in the traditional tarot that it gives because the these two are traditional tarot decks these two are considered more oracle cards so i just i love those cards i love what he put into the photography i love the interpretations i get from them and how i feel also these are just magical I searched high and low for these cards. You won't really find them. And the lady that I purchased them from had one left and these are used, which I loved because old school tarot was you had to get it as a gift or take them. I think there was a thing where you didn't purchase your own decks. I'll just say that. So when I come across a bookstore or a metaphysical store or an online store, whatever the case may be, Preferably in person. I get the best stuff in person. And over the years, I didn't do my best at keeping up with them. And then I had to learn the hard way about how important they were. So I'll just say these are one of those decks that I'll probably never find again. Um, and I'm never letting go of them. And they're pretty. Okay. And like I said, they have the traditional right awake. Um, interpretation which is va va voom okay for the intuition so a lot of readers would love them and that's the description I can give now for the crystals the quartz crystal I've had this since I started my YouTube channel I personally meditate with this stone and when I started Pisces TV I would ask that spirit source would take in whatever you wanted to get rid of whatever needed to be healed to look at this crystal and I'm sure that Source, my guides, would take care of it. So this is my baby. This is also my baby because Hecamar Diamond amplifies any other crystal. Um, and is super pretty. Even though that one's big and kind of old, they are not cheap. 
um, and they're well worth every penny. Now, the reason why I love obsidian or darker stones is because it's very protective. So I've had like protective cat eye rings. And if you notice, most, you know, elites, um, you know, have their pinky or whatever this finger is called. It's just a very classy, okay, kind of thing going on right here. So respect that. And then, of course, with selenite, it's my baby. So I chose to have even more selenite um, in the mix, clearing all of our stuff, right, with the zodiac runes. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. And it's so fitting, as I stated, these spark the intuition like none other. And to have the selenite there is just kind of magical. So I'll stop blabbing. OK, now that you have more information, I will give you a moment to make your selections and we will get started with the video for stack one, stack two, stack three and stack four. So let's get started with group one. All right, group one, we will get started with your reading. Now, your cards have been pre-shuffled, don't worry, okay? I sat them here for the sake of you being able to pick a stack after I had already shuffled them out. So I said I have to put it together and I could have left them to the side, but this time I did not because maybe you could see through it. Y'all got gifts and abilities. You could see what was coming. All right. Now group one, we have Pisces, Gemini, and Leo. I will be pulling a card for each Zodiac rune. Okay. I also want to start by the number 12 which connects to the hangman, but in this particular deck represents balance. It says the frequency of balance supports our ability to find harmony with all aspects of our third dimension and multi-dimensional layers of reality. I think that that's super dope as it is on the bottom of the deck. It could represent the past. For some of you with this bright yellow we have here, it's like the hangman is going to go in the reverse upright and there's some sort of awakening. There's some sort of clarity. For some of you, I feel that anything that we were stagnant on, um, codependent toward, you're one step closer to freedom. I know that the hangman also represents at times surrender, devotion, and even being like a prophet of some sort. So those of you that may have gifts and abilities as we're in Leo season, be mindful that these signs could fall anywhere in your chart. Pay attention specifically to the sun, moon, Venus, rising, north and south node. And I say that for those of you, well, I mean, across the board, north and south node connects to your boon as well as your karma. And in relationships, it also could be performative. Um, in how we go about making our choices, which relationships could be like karmic contracts and which would be more significant to getting us to the next phase, which would be like North Node energy. Leo season talks about the present. And I love that you guys have the solar plexus and the number three. The number three is connected to the number 12 as the 12 is a three as well. And I think that that's super cool because that talks about how three is a whole number one and two making three could tell how we needed to balance things out now why do i say that one may be connected to the magician two could be connected to the high priestess the magician uses things outside of it to manifest and it's given to the magician directly from source however sometimes when that ain't working, okay? We steal our minds and we wait on the whisper from who? Number two, the high priestess. 
to come in and guide us to provide that answer, that idea, or the information that we needed. Now, some of you with the transformation card, I can easily see one growing from the magician energy into the high priestess because at some point it's the things and spirit is like, nah, hear me out. Okay. At some point it's like the gifts um, and the tools are outside of us that we are manipulating, right? Be it light, be it earth, fire, emotions, whatever the case may be. The high priestess has everything within. The compass is within. She is the guide and is being guided by the ultimate guide, right? It's the, it's the um, intuition. It's the believing in the impossible. And that is very important for the magician or anyone that is trying to obtain a certain goal or trying to get somewhere. It's like believing this impossible thing, which probably is magic, is important. Those two characters also put me in the mind frame of a very popular relationship type where they're not really set um, early on on marriage and commitment, but usually do settle down with who's there. And it's not a negative thing. It's just so focused on our purpose, so focused on figuring things out, kind of having non-committal or just a, not a need you know someone who's like kind of detached a little bit they're just two energies where if the relationship blossomed they meet through mutual friends they meet along a journey um and i feel like that is the benefit of their particular relationship so it's super cool now the merkaba and the number 32 may be significant to some of you as i stated where it's more energetic another thing that i noticed too is that the yellow is the circle in the balance, just like the solar plexus. I noticed that the yellow is at the corners or the feet um, for the Merkaba, and it's not here. So I feel like whatever transformation, change, or action that needs to be taken, wherever the freedom is that you're being released from or wherever we were stagnant, it's in our actions or in our movement because Pisces is also connected to the feet. Um, and so I think that that's really interesting. Now, the Merkaba supports our ability to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic inheritance as well, uh, merging the totality of our experience into our present to serve our highest purpose. That sounds like manifesting to me. If you want to dig into your soul bank and or rely on the Akashic Records for understanding, be it to heal right through understanding and intelligence and the traumas we incarnated with, as well as understand what our gifts are and what we're great at, if it isn't just like really apparent to you in this life. So I think that that's super dope. When I think about the Merkaba, I think about the energy that is within and around a human being like you have your physical body in the third dimension but i feel like the physical body is like in the energy instead of like the energy being outside of you it's like here's here's everything and then here's the body right so for some of you it does talk about your energy if you have any questions about blocks um something that could be hindering you your progression or, or just something that could be worked on it would be the solar plexus because this could be more of a challenging position so just keep that in mind where the intuition could also be um i don't want to say interfered with but there could be an issue because you have one and two in balance three and two in the merkaba and then the number three here with the solar plexus and i know sometimes this energy is a little bit different from a more subtle higher vibration like sun energy is different from moon energy so balance is required either we need some more sun or you know there's this energy of feeling burnt out where the solar plexus sacral energies could help if we were feeling um kind of like deprived of energy right so here we have the solar plexus the frequency of the solar plexus chakra the yellow flower of life supports our sense of self, 
our uh, personal power and our willpower as well as our knowing of who we are and what our contribution is to the whole. So I think that that's super dope as we use terminologies like whole that's connected to the world card, which talks about the completion and the freedom that I felt coming from like that hangman energy and moving out of it through activating the Merkaba, which is a light body activation. The light body activation is connected to a higher being source. Source is also connected to the sun or the solar plexus, right? It's just like your soul power, your willpower. And then here we have 42. So it's implementing the four because you've had threes and twos all throughout. Implementing the four gives energy of stability, structure, discipline, and whatever this transformation is leading you toward. I think that it's pretty good for you and it's going to help in your third dimensional life as well as any other dimensions that you guys may have access to since we are talking about access in Akashic Records and also making changes to enhance your personal power or willpower. So the transformation card is a card that supports our ability to gracefully okay, flow through times of transformation, allowing the old to make room for the new. I feel that this transporta this transportation, this transformation, because I'm thinking, I guess the chariot just like came into my brain. Um, but this transformation may be happening in the present now of Leo season. So just be mindful of that. And let's take a flu, a flu okay. Let's take a few clarifiers to see what more can we pull for you, group one. So for the Merkaba, let's see what we have. Okay, slow down. I just want to get to know you. I saw this. Okay, we have the sea serpent. Okay, and the peacock. Things that we want, honey, and being emotionally attached to something. Oh my gosh, you got the strength card. It's super cute. But the ones that came out are here. Okay, you have the turtle, the fire ant, the zebra, and the elk. I feel that this is about communication. What is transforming is your connection to source and the capacity that you have. Now, it looks like this zebra has some sort of awareness of what's going on with the ants, but isn't there. So some of you could have gifts and abilities that allow you to see in situations that you're not present in, kind of like remote observation. Some of you can also sense chaos, okay, and understand where you may or may not need to be, okay? So just be mindful of that, of groups of people, gatherings, or events that could lead to some sort of chaos or turbulence. It's like you have the gift of foresight to kind of like know. Now with the turtle, it does talk about having everything that we need. It also talks about slowing down a bit as Mercury is in retrograde. Be mindful of that. And the elk, like I said, this direct connection and communication with source, that could lead to hyperactivity. So for some of us, there is a need to take it easy and be patient because it seems that the world around us, there may be some energy in your environment that's a little bit more chaotic than needed. These are two Earth energy cards, um, I do believe. And this, we have fire and water, okay? So it is pretty balanced um, and grounded, but I don't, I don't have any air here. And air usually is the communication. You have air here with the yellow, which sometimes talk about communication, and we have like the Mercury retrograde. But usually when I see the, when I use the chakra cards, it's important for me to focus on the colors or the actual chakra that presents itself to us. And as I stated before, you have the yellow and the red with the fire ants, and you also have that same energy um, in the elk. So I feel like what's going to be stimulated for you, maybe through meditation or how you can amplify your gifts and your abilities would be to work on those regions. And then for others of you, when I look at the turtle and all of the green, of course, I think of the heart chakra, and since I said, like, there's no air here, I know one important thing about the heart is you, you kind of like have to open the heart chakra to activate the Merkaba. 
and in doing so connect to kind of like a higher dimension okay so this is super cool i'm going to leave the strength card here okay because i've always said that some people feel that a soulmate or a twin flame is another person and for some of you it could represent another aspect of you or your spiritual companion like your guide right so that that is sometimes what a soul companion could be which is represented by um what is it the um the dog or whatever in the food card which has a lot of yellow in it so let's get one for the solar plexus i think the elf was for the solar plexus okay cool enough we have the knight of pentacles now the knight of pentacles in a challenging position with the solar plexus definitely tells us about energy so just be mindful of that where sometimes it's a bit stagnant a bit legarthy if that's a thing and a, and a bit hesitant so group one i group one i feel like there needs to be courage and bravery toward whatever it is that you want to pursue like this is the perfect energy to meet you know your goal make it to the finish line or whatever but at the same time um the energy being depleted you know and not really wanting to do much it's a message for us to be sure to take action because the moon is here right but the moon and a pentacle is very interesting combination whereas we have the sun here with the lion and the rose and it's like i'm here to help you know get you to the finish line because you're being initiated in the seven of wands usually the seven of wands is like some sort of initiation by fire which means that it could be a very challenging transformation I've also seen um, documentation on the initiates. So if any of you are into like occult anatomy, it could be a representation of you being accepted into like a higher realm. Now, this could also be in your physical lives where those of you that may be applying for jobs or gaining new friends um, in different collectives or even in a relationship, this does talk about commitment. So if your commitment is challenged it may be the solar plexus that needs a little bit of help others of you it is the solar plexus um, and the spirit of the earth that's going to help usher in whatever this transformation is to see to it that you know you can sustain whatever i guess that you're going through because in the transformation you have the phoenix so rising from the ashes that is pretty dope you also have the gazelle and the earthworm so I feel that what, whatever this um, stagnant energy may be, I feel that it amplifies maybe for a moment with the earthworm because that's like a lower vibrational energy. And then with the phoenix, like I said, it's like rising from the ashes and going through the transformation, even if it totally destroys you, even though I don't think you guys are going to be totally destroyed, okay? Um, it also points to what we said at the beginning where you have an eye for things that don't serve you. And if this is a relationship for some of you guys, you're just going to have to, you know, stand on your toes and be brave enough to focus on what it is that you truly want, which is probably a commitment of some sort or at least someone who is financially stable and secure enough to have a mature relationship because this this energy the gazelle talks about grace so it's the graceful aspect of the strength card to deal with whatever these lower vibrational energies are or if your energy becomes depleted okay so i do love that now as promised i am going to pull a card for each zodiac sign okay and i'll sit them here because i think that would be cute so we're gonna do pisces gemini and leo let's get one for pisces <laughs> okay pisces you have the turtle with the fire in all right gemini and we'll we'll break it down we'll break it down we'll break it down Ooh, you got the nine of pentacles with the father of swords and leo Oh, not the mouse. Leo. I did see Crossroads, and I was trying to see why. Uh, but two things can be true, okay? To do what you love and to have what it takes to get there. Now, someone can be 
everything that you think they are so you're going to have to use your intuition and i don't know why this is falling out leo but you're going to have to use your intuition when it comes to a decision um or a person it may involve another person and they may seem like you know a, a good choice right but at the same time there could be some charming destructive or manipulative manipulative energy about them and you're going to have to see between the lines okay that's why you got these lines here the shadow shade in the cup but source is also connected to you is just in another way now i also see the two of swords as scissors so for some of you if you're cutting something out of your life i feel that it would usher in what it is that you truly want by removing something that you don't and then this knight of cups shows up as something that you're manifesting that has an offering for you so it's like if you offer something up that no longer serves you there's potential for you to get something that it is that you want for you gemini now this used to be my gemini card but the father of swords is also aquarian energy with the nine of pentacles it does talk about finances so this is like the the nine of pentacles is usually a female that is stable and single unmarried the father of swords is usually a divorced person an older male a judge an attorney or just someone who means serious business so some of you if you mean serious business that's definitely going to get your paper i like that the four little feathers here are connected to the four swords which talks about victory now victory is connected to the father of swords so for you gemini i feel that there's going to be victory and increase in some matter okay now for pisces it's a lot of chaos and you are protected in this shell but there's an energy for pisces is like being introverted in your shell versus being out in the motion right if you want more motion or action in your life you may have to come out of the shell a little bit others of you may be going into your personal space because it's a lot going on <laughs> okay um, so just be mindful of that. The ant sometimes talks about work. So if you have been working diligently towards something, this could also be a message to slow down so that you're not burnt out. Okay. So that is what I have for you, group one. I do hope that it helps and we will move to group two. Group two, you guys had the beautiful Herkimer stone. Look at that. Oh, diamond. Let me be clear. The Herkimer diamond. We also have Aries, Sagittarius, and Aquarius. I will be pulling individual tarot cards for your zodiac questions. Your cards have been shuffled out, so have no worries. You have Copper, Ash, and Chiron. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you guys have the Andronjan energy. Okay. Now I will say intuitively, let's start with that. Chiron is 11. That is spiritual. So you guys may have something with this ash card here within the energy that of course may need to be transmuted for your highest good. Now what that is, we're going to determine within this copper, but I know that the copper card seems to have a connection to the empress it may be parts of your boon or your abundance. I know that copper is also a very good stone that I use to transfer energy. So if you are into like meditation, if you're trying to heighten your spiritual abilities or your communication to spirit, then copper is a very good stone to use. Now, in addition to that, it's a little bit of, what do they call it? Uh, calcification or something. We're like, if this was your third eye and it's something like on it, there may need to be a clearing or a cleansing of some sort if something is blocked, okay? Or just becoming, I don't want to say contaminated with something, but you get what I'm saying, right? And then we have the ash here for anybody that says, well, I've done that, I've healed, you know, this probably isn't for me. The ash points to that perfect scenario where there could have been a clearing you know the fire is very purifying however the smoke hasn't all the way cleared and there's there's a little bit of something there or i'm getting that something is covering something 
if it's not you, it may be someone in the environment that is kind of like covering their true feelings and maybe due to unresolved issues or something that needs to be healed, okay? So let's just crack open the Andromedan energy because, or androgen energy, because it does represent the past. It's, it's going to kind of start us off with what's going on within this situation, okay? This energy, let's see what we have. Okay. I always get the, I'm going to get better with this Roman numerals, I promise. So this talks about transcendence, multiplicity, and the artist, all right? The Androgen is a deeply revered image in alchemy, born of Hermes and Aphrodite. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's depicted as a balanced union of divine masculine, the sun, and divine feminine, the moon. Yet today's alchemist knows the Androgen is far more nuanced than that. It encompasses the infinite spectrum and reveals itself in ever-changing non-binary forms. The divine homorphodite defies definition as it is a deeply personally felt experience. Access in this fluid and enlightened state requires us to slip into the contradictory realm of the senses. Bre breath by breath, we are drawn into our limbs, our fluids, fluids, and our orifices, organs, and cells. We let go of rules and labels. Judgment is suspended. The gods are present. Um, our as are the creative mysteries of the underworld. So for a brief moment, we hold all of our complexities in one loving form, like a newborn. So, and I did mention the Empress, so that's kind of crazy. So it seems as though there's a situation at hand or a person that we probably are going to have to remove our traditional judgment from or way of thinking just to get to the bottom of what's going on, truly heal something or to compromise, okay? So when we look at copper, copper is fertility, the wound, and Venus energy. So check where that falls in your chart. Could also point to a relationship. It doesn't have to. This energy, um, in ancient times on an island called Cyprus, copper was mined extensively to make vessels and tools. Okay, This island is the same fertile ground of Aphrodite. The goddess associated with the planet Venus. So there's a connection here, okay? Love, pleasure, and fertility, such as the magic of copper. This golden-hued metal, uh, what is it? Delights our mystique. Even a sense of awe. The copper card marks the arrival of Eros. So this is like a love situation for some of you guys. Now, we are moving into Mercury Retrograde. And this could be a lover's return because the ash card represents the past. It represents what's, what has come before us or at this moment. It also talks about the ancestors. So there could be a message from your ancestors for some of you regarding a situation or just a requirement that there's this breakaway that's needed from any traditional teachings, if that makes sense, where it says to pause all judgment um, it also talks about the memories or something that happened in the past. So for some of you, this situation may involve a past lover um, or a past experience, as well as like an actual person from the past, because they always return through a Mercury retrograde. It's like, I don't know, they can't help themselves. <laughs> so with the ash card, it says ash represents what has come before it. The fire is over now and it's flames took with it all recognizable forms of what was burned. So here we're losing judgment, trying to forget things, right? Here, all the forms, the actual pictures, the vivid visions that we could remember are now just ashes in the flame, right? When this card appears, look back and sift through what has occurred. You are in the realm of ancestors, past relationships, and those that have passed to another realm. Be gentle with the process as it is delicate and sacred. The ash card asks us to tend to the true nature of endings, grief, and letting go. You may be asked to be present with another who is experiencing loss. When in doubt, be like the ash. It is silkening, light, and easily carried by the wind. So soften into the memories and into the tears. And next to that, you have Chiron, like I said, that is accompanied by that number 11 up there. Chiron is about wounds, 
teaching and paradoxes, okay? It is a cosmic enigma. In Greek mythology, it is said to be the rejected son of Saturn who through the pain of abandonment becomes a great teacher and healer. So for some of us with all of this Venus energy, past energies, I feel like there could even be some childhood traumas that are brewing that may be significant to repair. Some situations or conversations could be coming up, but we'll take some clarifiers to see exactly where it's going. All right, so for the copper card, this is an ending that has occurred. All right, you have the moth that is also connected to death. And I feel that whomever or whatever this was, I felt had some sort of authority within the relationship um, or within your life, okay? Doesn't have to be a parent. Um, and I feel that there could even be issues with codependency as usually the wolf is the leader of the pack. So if this isn't you rising to the occasion to be like the leader for the next generation, your family, your household, whatever the case may be, it just talks about maybe someone who could have been in a leader position that sort of dropped the ball, okay? You also have the five of wands, which is a very toxic energy when we're talking about past and ancestors, childhood traumas, or parents, because it does represent like a competitive nature. So just be mindful of that. If there is an issue returning or something that ended um, due to this competitive nature, which is why judgment should be ceased and healing um, is the answer because it, it's just not the best energy for a relationship, uh, for parenting, for family matters. It just seems like either someone's looking for the needle in the haystack at night, <laughs> which is very challenging, um, and there needs to be some sort of clearing or cleansing to do that. It just talks about being in a situation where you probably have never really been supported. If you're in competition or someone else is in competition with you, that should more so be a protector or a guide, um, which could talk about a relationship or, like I said, a parent or a guardian of some sort. There may be a conversation or an issue there or where the healing starts. Okay, we'll just say that. Now with the ash, okay, and I'm going to move this book to the side. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we got a lot, but I'm going to take the first one uh, here. That This came out before, okay? So the sea serpent definitely talks about the emotions. It also talks about consciousness, and I feel that there may be a situation that's even provoked by spirit to bring some sort to bring some sort of to bring some sort of awareness to a situation if there is any confusion um or fear okay your confusion the things that confuse you and the things that you're afraid of the most could surface because you're growing into whatever your higher self is whatever your soul purpose is and those things have to be cleared for you to raise your vibration okay now for chiron because this is like the pupil. It's like learning through a remembrance, too. Okay? Because I'm looking at the eye. Ooh, but let's look at the good news. Okay? There may be transits. Please do check where Sharon could fall in your chart. The Wheel of Fortune does talk about things going in your favor. But it also says that these things were faded. So, one thing that comes to me intuitively when it comes to healing through understanding or, or knowing that it has something to do with fate is that these people could have had many different names. Um, they could have been, instead of a parent, they could have been a lover. Instead of a lover, it could have been a child. It's like these are past life relationships that I feel have reincarnated into the present. And until the energy is cleared, we could continue to reincarnate with these issues. Now, also, depending on your natal chart, when you were born, whatever the transits were doing at the time has some sort of bit to do with your energy. It's kind of just like the ashes. When things fall from, you know, out of the outer space, I was going to say the outer world, onto the planet, sometimes we don't see what they are, of course, but it's the elements and the minerals and the materials that mix onto this plane um, and if nothing else, the energy that connects us to some transits, because some transits affect others differently than they would someone who has like a square 
or something less favorable in their chart. So just be mindful of that. Now, the sea serpent is a spirit card. Okay. So a message from spirit, which is part of the challenge because it's the second card with the ash. Let's see what we have here. It talks about healing emotional wounds and expressing desire. So here is a go ahead to non-biasedly express desires, right? And here is healing that um, energy, right? The sea serpent represents the energy of expression, whether it's emotion, creativity, sensuality, or desire. The sea serpent helps us move and direct our energy into a healthy current. When the essence of this card is in balance, we express ourselves creatively and sexually without fear or shame. We know what we desire most. Our hearts are at ease and our relationships are meaningful and enduring. We loosen the grip of self-judgment and we let the cool water of forgiveness in to heal our wounds. When the energy of the sea serpent is not yet activated, our emotions and creativity are left in the muddy waters. The current of expression stagnates in some areas of our lives and in other places it floods. It's important to remember, no matter what the water of our emotional lives look like, the sea serpent loves us just the same, like a mother. And did I say there's some sort of healing energy there? So I don't know if there was some sort of transfer um, or change, you know, with a mother figure that is just like, or a grandmother, that is trying to get you to open up to who you truly are and express yourself because it could be offset with a lack of healing and possibly, you know, tears or emotional imbalance. So it's important to kind of balance those things out because you do have someone supporting you, even if physically in the present, you are unaware of it. Okay. So we are going to pull your cards for your zodiacs. Okay. One for each zodiac. And we are going to start with Aries. Is Shara in the Aries still? Okay, we're going to see. Sagittarius and Aquarius. One card for each of you. Let's see what we have for... Okay. <laughs> for Aries, you have strength. Okay. Strength tells us to use humility and grace um, over ego sometimes for certain situations and or if we've been in a very graceful um energy it's just time to kind of like use some of that fire now i feel that there could be ooh something unexpected in leo season for you you have the tower here oh my gosh with the lovers and the eight of cups jesus christ there may be a relationship or a situation that ends as soon as it begins because there wasn't compromise and two forces kind of just did not match. I'm not going to hold you. The chariot is usually, you know, the two horses going in different directions. And the only way the chariot moves properly is if there's a hand from a higher power and source or one ultimate goal. Okay. If you would like to mend the situation or you want it to work, here is compromise right here. And compromising is what's going to get this chariot to go to the finish line even with the opposing forces if it isn't two people um and it's other things involved i still feel like focusing on focusing on the ultimate goal or compromising may be very important self-esteem okay um confidence which strength provides is also necessary uh there could be some ideas multiple choices and then choosing none all right. So if someone does have multiple choices and you're wondering how a situation will pan out, ultimately and unexpectedly, this person may walk away from it all. I'm not going to lie. And it could even be you. Now, what you don't know is there's the moon and there is the six of wands. So if we're walking away from things and sudden, suddenly, you know, experiencing separation, the mystery is in what we don't see that there could be some sort of a uh, reward. Now, I don't know if the reward is from walking away from things that no longer serve you, or if we decided to not make a choice at all and one of the choices would have been very rewarding, okay? We can pull a card to see. One for walking away. 
and one for staying. Okay, we got two cards here. Walking away and stay. Okay, for you. Now, for some of you guys, because at the bottom of the deck, you got the owl, which talks about money luck. And you also have cobra. Okay, the cobra is like when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Um, so if this doesn't involve a relationship, I feel that you may want to have the courage to move forward with whatever it is that you're planning. Because if you don't feel competent enough, um, you could miss an opportunity. It says when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if you, it's just like if you build it, they will come type thing. Okay. So here is, did I say staying or going? See, going. There's a horse that's going to go. And I feel like the one who was willing to compromise um, or has some sense of integrity in the situation is either released from a karma contract or receives some sort of physical reward. Okay, so I can't be mad at that. For Sagittarius, let's see what you guys have. You have the spider. I do see that. The What is it? The, the bed that we, the webs that we weave, y'all. Okay. Now, I don't know if this is just a lot of fire energy, but how many of you who are choosing to, you know, are in the energy of like holding on or letting go of something? You know, if it's a if it's a toxic environment um, or even if it's self limitation. OK, so that we can manifest what it is that we're wanting. Let's get some. Oh, did the cards drop? OK, cool. The spirit is like, stop cutting the cards. Let me just take a look. See, OK. Well, I, I knew it was some fire energy. Someone has money on their mind for sure. Okay. Now there is growth and an opportunity for change when it comes to hiding your gifts and your abilities. So I feel like your boon comes from a talent or something that you're hiding, a way of expression, something that the world needs to see, but they haven't seen. And I feel that your emotional tie to it is buried down deep inside and there's even some cynical behavior behind it so it's like you you really do want something you would like something you have a gift and a bit and an ability naturally to do this thing but whatever your past experiences have uh wherever they have brought us today to present it's some cynical energy behind it like where i don't know I don't want to say, but sometimes it's like people feel they age out of things or, you know, if you've been married or been in relationships before, it's just having this wise old energy of what we ain't doing type deal. Um, so whatever works, <laughs> but Sag, you have the oyster. The oyster does talk about the magic inside and there could be either victory, healing or surrendering to it. Okay. Now the oyster card. Like I said, normally it talks about some sort of magic inside, but you see that it's in the shell and it takes time for that to be developed, right? So it talks about patience, hidden inner treasures. It says the focus and determination of the oyster is unmatched. Anything an oyster personality puts their mind to, they achieve with grace and charm. The only problem is oyster types often take their inner gifts for granted. They become shy or doubtful, and this can lead to withdrawing or protecting their deepest desires in life's work. When the oyster card appears, it's important to revel your inner treasures or reveal your inner treasures. What is it you've been hesitant to share? The world is waiting to see. Okay, that is what you have there. Now we're going to move on to Aquarius. And see what we have. You got the otter. So Aquarius, I think this may be a playful time for you. Um, it may involve children. doesn't have to. But it's just like a really joyful, playful-like energy. Which is normal, right? Cracking jokes. Not taking it too serious. Don't call you focusing on the coins. Possibly. What do we have? <laughs> when I say focusing on the coins, possibly. Are y'all dealing with a Leo? I feel that self-mastery is very important. And who who said give it to me raw and true we have the firefly and the hangman the firefly is being the light in darkness right but the issue is not really feeling like doing that and i have been in that position too where like 
you are appointed to do something, right? Being chosen to do something. You are the truth, by the way. Um, but being chosen to do something by, I would say, a guide, ascended master, or just a higher part of you has a life purpose or a destiny in doing something. And whatever that is just involves, like, truth and honesty. And it's not really fluff cake. I feel that it's just what everybody needs but like no one wants okay so that's pretty interesting i just want to get one card to see where we're going with this okay for you guys what's the most important thing for you all i see the ace of swords so we're on to something it definitely talks about the truth um it may talk about increase or finances letting go and liberating yourselves one card look at this <laughs> just want one card I could just go all day with, okay, there's going to be some changes, good changes, favorable changes in the finances for all of you. I got the sign card. Can I have one? Okay. If I don't have one, I'm going to shuffle and then we'll pull from the top. Okay. Now you didn't get the one card that I asked for. Okay. But you did get the eight of wands. That's the one that came out first. It talks about a lot of messages, texting, traveling, going the distance, or a lot of action. The father of wands is very athletic, could be an entrepreneur. Um, a husband doesn't have to be your husband, because usually the emperor would be your husband, child, or somebody else's husband. Or if relationships are a topic, the magician, non-committal, the father of wands will make a great husband. And the son of cups is going to present itself as this one, and could possibly be this one. So you too, okay, would have to use your discernment. Um, when Gemini had that, that is crazy. So you would have to use your discernment regarding a situation because either there's going to be like some interference with your psyche, right? You know how like sometimes you just feel like you're under psychic attack, you know, and you just need to protect your third eye child and anything else um, energetically that you use on a day-to-day -day basis because I feel like if it isn't mercury that causes some sort of communication issues, it just may be an inability to focus or concentrate. Um, but at the same time, either being surrounded by a lot of movement and action or being in action yourself, um, which could lead to destructive behavior. So just be mindful of that. Where healing and, and kind of like taking time when it comes to making decisions if things could go either way, just know that you have a choice within that moment of what way that is that it is going to go or could go okay so i do hope that it helps uh group two and we are going to move to group three group three it is your turn with the beautiful obsidian stone all right let's get started your cards have been pre-shuffled and we are also going to take clarifiers as well as pull a card for each zodiac you've had capricorn scorpio and libra that is a very nice combination i might say now first of all you guys start out with the sun card mm, the eight of wands mm, and the two of wands i am feeling it already so i hope you are too don't forget if it when it resonates hit the like button at the bottom of the deck <laughs> You have the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles does talk about wealth, health, and abundance. It could also talk about family. If you are in a relationship, this could be talks about moving in together. Blended families, you know, the head leaving, you know, the generations to come. It talks about a legacy, your legacy. Now, the Sun card to start out talks about the present moment, maybe Leo energy. It also is possibly a yes to your question and it's telling you to take action and move forward with confidence if you have something on your mind, okay? Because he definitely got something on his mind, but he ain't moving. So for some of you, the action, the messages, the movement could be in front of you, all right? How do you feel about that? We'll have to see. Now, with the two of wands, she's facing a past position, but still looking out for the ships to come in. Now, this represents the shipment so i don't know how many of you that have like packages involved money involved uh paperwork involved it could be with school business family anything uh, i was going to say of severity it doesn't have to be super serious but it does involve some sort of shipment ships coming in 
uh, something from the past, it could be as simple as your past efforts being rewarded. The Sun card could also talk about a union of some sort. And with the Eight of Wands, it moving forward very fast. This person could be interested in moving in with you, okay? Or talking about marriage. You could have children together. Don't have to have them. But someone is definitely looking forward uh, to the future. Now, the decision being made, though, if this is just mental energy, the third wand, right? Because in the Two of Wands, I would usually she has two wands in her hand. Let me just say that. Maybe it's not a third wand one light is leading the way okay the other one is behind her in like this emergency you know break glass kind of thing so maybe someone isn't fully confident and really isn't moving while we have one person it's a definite yes moving forward to the future someone else could feel like that is just happening too fast because he is sitting there still okay now i don't know how many dates you guys have been on or if you've even gone on a date but he's sitting at a dinner table and the chandelier is just swinging before him. So it's kind of like time passing and by, right? So we are definitely going to pull some clarifiers and really dig into what's going on here. Group three. Now let's pull a clarifier on the sun card. I do have the fox, so it, it may represent a person, okay? Or the lesson itself. Very clever. The fox says that whatever situation is happening here, it's going to require some sort of charm, intelligence, to be quick-witted, okay? Because um, that's the fox energy, okay? And the sun is like clarifying itself, all right? So whatever this is, it's going to require somebody to be very smart, all right? If I can get one card for the sun. We have the lizard. The lizard. This may talk about a promise. Something is promised or a promise that someone made. Uh, could be significant now the lizard also talks about our focus so if you are out and about if you are looking for a sign maybe in your environment there could actually be lizards doesn't have to be but sometimes the the lizard can be flaky and someone who is non-committal so just keep that in mind that is uh, kind of like in alignment with a person who may feel like something is moving too fast and well, one one is the yes or the idea. It's not really solid yet. And these are amazing cards, especially with the Ten of Pentacles. So this is like kind of flaky. I'm not going to hold you. It's like where everything seems to be a go and OK at first. Then all of a sudden, it's just this energy that is not being talked about. And then what I what I also I'm not going to say what I don't like, but what I've noticed is everyone's back is turned. And they're looking out into something that hasn't happened yet. So I don't think that this has happened uh, yet for you, group three. Let's get a clarifier on the eight of wands. We also have the eight of pentacles, 88. So this may be significant to um, the portal that is coming up. All right. I did see the three of wands <laughs> just now. I kid you not. Now you have two. This is crazy. You got two eights. You got two sixes. So for some of you, it's like someone is super happy, okay? The Six of Wands talks about rewards. The Six of Pentacles talks about effort and reciprocity and receptivity. It talks about giving and receiving. So where one may not be fully capable, the other totally is. But it's like, what am I going to give to receive? And for some, it's attention, okay? So it's like paying attention to a situation and it does talk about support. If you have any confusion regarding this situation, I would pay attention to the actions of that person. Like, are they feeding into you or they're not? Are they supporting you or they're not? Okay. Now with the two of wands, I got the ace of swords. So it does talk about setting boundaries. Some of you, it may be a wish fulfillment. I saw the nine of cups. And for others of you, we have the B. Okay, Bs are very significant. They cannot be in toxic environments. It may also talk about work uh, for some of you guys. Let's see what we have here with the B. Where did it go? Because I want to tie it into this six of pentacles 
and see who's being flaky. I don't like that. But they may not be being flaky. It's like a mind reader of some sort. So the B represents hardworking, um, democratic, and earnest. The B personality is a delight to be around, especially when there's a team project on the horizon. And I did say, if it's not a team per se, I just feel like it's more than you involved in the situation, okay? Bees love to work steadily and thoughtfully until the final task is complete. They are sensitive creatures, aware of many sub, uh, what is that, subtleties at once. Since they're artists at heart, they usually add creative detail to an overall vision. For the most part, they have bursting, joyous personalities until they're too tired from all of the work and they gripe and they sting. So just be mindful of that. Now, I did want to see a little bit more of why the lizard comes out um, with the sun. Because the lizard is sometimes present in the wand suit and it could be the page or the knight of wands. So that does talk about either excitement, okay, and or something like and jumping the gun, okay? So there's like jumping the gun, there's also excitement or some sort of adventure. There may even be a temporary situation. Um, if you're in a, tem a temporary situation right now, it does say with the Six of Pentacles that help is on the way. So that's beautiful to understand. If there's like something financially going on, you're in between at the moment, this Six of Pentacles does talk about help and support. So the lizard represents the same thing, sensitive to the subtle. They're just, I knew it was going to be some kind of connection, okay? The lizard is an expert in the realm of sensory and perception, as if it has a sixth sense. And see, I knew that, like where, where something is not being said, and it seems a little different from how they feel, some of you are already aware of that, okay? Now, although this is an amazing gift to have, it can easily wear the lizard down. So big crowds, lots of travel, or overstimulation will drain a lizard of their magical essence. This card is an indication to pull back from the bright lights and big city and return to the inner artist who's been whispering your name, okay? So this is just some, something could have gone hot, heavy, and fast, or something may be going that way in the near future. And there's someone who could be overstimulated by it, even if it's amazing. Um, so just be mindful of that, okay? Especially if there's gift giving and support. If if that's if you keep pulling from the well and not pulling back into it, I do feel that there could be a problem or a shakeup within a friendship. Also, I saw the buffalo, and sometimes the buffalo signifies that those of you that are in temporary situations or in the in-between where the support is coming in, the buffalo still asks to be kind of like accepting and a little bit even nonchalant of any unexpected situations, right? To watch your reaction, to not have any fear, and to know that everything is going to be okay, all right? Now, more insight on the lizard energy with the sun. Just be mindful to not be burnt out. Okay, that's very important as far as like energetic wise or just using the third eye, you know, some of you that have gifts and abilities, the six of pentacles would definitely tell us to be grounded um, and just be mindful what you're paying attention to. Okay, with the six of pentacles, <laughs> see, you have the lovers, which is possibly two choices, two ways something could go. And then you have the tower. So the five of pentacles is what I feel like is one choice and the six of pentacles would be the other. Also, since you do have like two cards here, the six of wands, look at that, could be one choice and the six of pentacles could be another. Now, if this is a challenging situation and someone becomes aware, right, that the attention isn't there, the support isn't there, okay, this could even tell you about a person. This person may have broken a promise and then it came to your attention and your awareness of how many times that may have happened or what lack of support they truly have even provided to you. The Ten of Pentacles says that it may be a very important person to you or at some point you felt like this was your soulmate, like your forever person um, or somebody that just means a lot to you. And I don't think in the beginning you realized how many promises they broke 
or how much they didn't support you. And this could have led to just some unstable feelings, a breakup, an unexpected separation, or just whatever lies that have been told. You know, even if we tell them to ourselves, I've done that. You don't have to be shy. Okay. Especially if you're dealing with one of these signs. Now, this is a non-biased pick a card. Okay. But I will say, um, this very well could happen to a Capricorn, a Scorpio or Libra, but I would bet you a couple of dollars that you may have chosen this group, um, because of like probably dealing with one of these signs now if not don't cuss me out or block me okay there are some that have even if you're not and if you say well damn i did do this to a person then <laughs> it happens right now if this doesn't involve other people like i said it does talk about choices and decisions now some of you may be brainstorming and suddenly get an idea those of you who get an idea right now back back to my capricorn scorpios and libras some of you may be getting an idea out of thin air and this idea is going to bring some sort of attention to you, your business, your work life, your finances, and the attention comes in with a couple of coins. Okay. So I feel like that's why spirit is saying whatever, you know, whatever decisions, whatever ideas that you're getting to take action toward them. And it may be in the realm of work. All right. This idea is going to come to you within. You could just be sitting there. And you think of something, you can see something and think of something or hear something and think of something. But I feel like for the most part, it's just going to come from within you, like your mind's eye type deal. OK. Now, with the B, we have some, some wrapping up some sort of project and completing something. We also have teamwork and focusing on the goal. OK, some of you are working directly with spirit. Others of you, it just represents what August has in store for us. And depending on your personal natal chart. It just may be a very auspicious time for you to get something done. Now, those of you where there's an event, all right, let's go back to this and let me tell you why. The Eight of Wands, he's sitting at a table and I did say it's like dinner, a date, there's something. Here goes the Four of Wands where it talks about arrangements, you know, a date, some sort of invitation. It could even talk about an event. I have the Seven of Swords here. So I feel like somebody and look at the fox. OK, I feel like someone isn't being completely honest with how they feel and they just letting shit go in front of them and ain't saying nothing. Now, I understand sometimes why we may want to do that, but it may not go so well um, or we can get in deeper further and we don't want to have to break promises if we can do something about it beforehand. Now, whatever this is, look at this. It may slow things down. There may even be some delays. OK, there could even be something that doesn't even make sense, like a mystery on how something happened. Like, how did it get to this point? How did it slow down? You know, how did the package get lost? Like the page of pentacles is also the cornerstone of the ten of pentacles and represents a person that could have the highest potential in regards to a relationship. But there's something about this relationship that just doesn't make sense. And I feel that it gets stuck in this area where it doesn't make sense. Now, one or both of you are still holding on. One or both of you feels that an opportunity has been missed. They may have some regrets or sadness. And there could even be someone dealing with depression, like feeling blue. Okay. Now, one of you or both of you have been protected from a situation because you're lucky where I feel like. If this isn't about marriage, it's more so about like my way of the highway type energy. Okay. Now, if someone has some sense of awareness, overlooks some past text messages, or just looks out into the past, right, where they once were optimistic and things got away from them and this situation changed or took a turn, I feel that there still are some sort of regrets. Or someone just isn't really happy about marriage. Like marriage itself just seems restrictive to them and a little bit traditional where they could be a little bit more unorthodox. Okay, so just keep that in mind. They may want to be single. Look at this. They may want to be single. Um, because they're, they're attending. Well, I think it, it also may be some differences in personalities because somebody's real cool, calm, and collected. And somebody else likes a little bit of chaos and drama. So one person is kind of grounded 
um, that helps the situation, and another person may be the individual that's causing things to be stirred up or stinging. Now, if that isn't their relationship, it points back to the B, where it says the B does great when it works, just like the Queen of Pentacles is, is great at details, organizing, decorating, designing, but when out of balance, you know, and overworked, there could be some sort of sting, okay? And I would hate for it to start with a headache, so just be mindful of your health, okay? Now, for my singles, if you're here, the tiger is about desire. The zebra is about something unique and different. So that could be what brings someone to you. Like someone sees that you're very unique and you're very different, eccentric even. Um, and look at that. It, <laughs> it's like two people even being brought together by one thought and one mind. That's super dope. Now just imagine if it's one of those situations where you know how we get collective messages or whatever. And then you have a group of songs coming out, a group of businesses, a group of things that all seem similar to each other. Like they're all getting the same messages over a loudspeaker or something. This could very well be what brings a couple together, a business together, some business ideas or like the new way for the collective if spirit is going to be throwing out some messages to the collective. And it would be smart if we would, you know, pick up on them because we got 10 pentacles here um that's involved and speaking of the ten of pentacles let's see what we got for that i see a portal of opportunity for some of you i feel like a completion of some sort of work okay also an advisory to not stretch yourselves too thin okay because that could bring something to a halt or an ending um okay thank you spirit even though i've been asking for a card baby all night and I keep getting books here here is the ten of pentacles so it's definitely physical it's definitely money it's enough to pass down to the generations to come if you have children's uh children I said children's um and or it represents growth all right favorable me uh, memories you know shivery not being dead so I feel like it's a very romantic time or a period of growth that leads to some abundance and I'm talking about physical tangible finances property deeds contracts things of that nature now for some of you there may be entrepreneurs and spiritually based businesses okay this is like with the phoenix and the sea serpent it's fire and water and what's fire and water it is steam now some of you be making maybe even make products i know i know a girl that made like yoni steams um and different little products and stuff like that but those could be the collective ideas that are coming out, okay? So we have doing the work, okay? And some of you, it may even be favorable for you to do your work at night, or it could be nighttime where you are now watching this video. I also see that there is increase coming for some, okay? And then watch out, because once you get this increase, it's kind of like everybody want a piece of it. Look at that. Now, this reminds me of, <laughs> you know, the sayings online when they go, um, if I ever hit the lottery, I'm not going to tell anybody, but there will be signs, right? So just watch out for the signs that you throw out there when you get the bread, okay? Now, we are going to pull the individual cards for the signs. Let's see what we have here. Capricorn, Scorpio. Libra. It's going to go just like that. I think it go like that. There we are. These are so beautiful. These are my favorite. I could just sit here and do this with the with the little things all day. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just love them. Okay. So, let's go. Let's see what we have here. For Cappy Cap Cap. All right. Capricorn, you are some hard working people. Learn to have a little bit of fun. I feel like slow down and don't spread yourself too thin regarding a situation because the four of cups at the bottom of the deck just says that moving too fast, it may be rejected and or not to your approval. Okay. You may work diligently towards something and realize that you did all that and still don't want it. So just be mindful of that. And this could also be connected to Libra, or if any of you are dealing with the Libra, we got the Queen of Swords here. 
with the Four of Cups. And I feel that it just represents either receiving more than enough, which could be the feeling of stretched thin. Um, something needs to change. And whatever brings about that feeling of something needing to change has a lot to do with your joy, right? If something isn't bringing you joy, it may be coming to an end this month, okay? Now, the eagle sees, you know, has, a, has the tunnel vision. So I feel like whatever this is, until it's resolved, um, you're probably not going to really let up on it. So just be mindful, and we'll leave the eagle out. Okay, because it, it like it sees what it wants, it goes and it grabs it, and then it's like, ain't what it wants. Uh, it's like, it's not, it may not be what it wants. And it's also um, a spirit animal that brings about some sort of warning sign because the sun is here, the eagle is above the sun, so it's kind of like the hangman in reverse waiting on something, trying to figure something out, or just quite not sure yet. I see that, you know, it hasn't gone into reverse, so waiting a little bit um may be favorable okay now for scorpio look i was gonna say i'm not surprised God. you got the eight of swords now the eight of swords could talk about a toxic environment there may be a situation where we are limiting ourselves okay self-limitation and i feel that you are an old soul and are fully capable of doing whatever it is that needs to be done I also feel that if you resonated with the aspect of the story where somebody's holding something back or it's you, that extra sword coming into the seven of swords may be the truth. Okay. And then the truth will set you free because this beautiful butterfly is going to fly off. So if you put something that isn't ready yet, um, in a toxic environment, fortunately this thing that isn't ready, yet has wings. So it's not going to fall on these swords. It's going to float away. So it's kind of, as frivolous as the five of swords in this sense now others of you it's a this thing regarding the ten of pentacles if it's our health just be mindful that there could be um, during this magical month right with any spiritual awakenings activations or just transits that are happening um that it's important that you stay grounded any negative thinking or self-doubt just um, transfer it or implement a positive one to balance it out okay i will say that now for libras <laughs> libra what do we have for you okay or if you're cross watching what do we have for your libra oh okay so remember when i said it was a part of the reading where the buffalo came out and you see this tower right here and it, it don't care um I feel like somebody could be trying to be real slick, real sly, real smart. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Libra is going to care. I think because they have this energy and it could be vice versa. Libra, you may need this energy to get through a situation where there could be a lesson to be learned or a sneaky, tricky, a tricky manipulator in the environment to not be reactive. And Spirit said that's what it is. Okay, boom. To not be very reactive um, to whatever this is, to understand that everything is going to be what it is, and to not have fear, to not have anger, to not really have nothing. And I usually don't tell people how to respond. I can't tell you what to do. But these cards just present themselves as someone smart enough to not be reactive in a situation. I'll just say that. So that is very interesting, my dears. And I do hope that it helped. We will move to group four. Group four, my beautiful Selenite team squad. Let's go. Your cards have been shuffled out. We are also going to pull some clarifiers and pull individual cards for your zodiac stones. That's super dope. We're going to start out with your Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups could represent water, okay? It's, what is this, the King of Cups? Uh, Scorpio energy, possibly Pisces. It also represents, you can't take it with you, okay? So there may be people, a place, a thing that no longer serves you where you're going, all right? 
Now, I'm noticing that they have five cups on one side, three cups on the other side, and someone is choosing neither. Like, there are some questions to be answered, and we're going on a search to figure out what it is because the five cups sometimes talks about feeling blue, sadness, and missed opportunities, and the three of cups can sometimes talk about celebrations, right? Or just kind of having this inner knowing of figuring things out. Either way, that's not present in the situation, okay? Now... You have the Page of Cups coming in, which may be challenging. So it could be an offer. There may be something brought to you that you're trying to discern. And you're going on a search to figure out that. Maybe who you are, your true feelings, and to give back some sense of self. There may have been an offer made and someone chose to do what was best for them. And it also talks about self-love. All right? And trying to contain our emotions while someone is doing that because there may have been some ghosting even right here. And she's looking, I mean, I could tell, see, it's kind of like a mix. She's not sad, but she's not really happy. And there's a lot of blue. So there's that. There's a rose and there's two roses, but there's only one person. So is there a rose that she could have wanted to give, okay, in this situation? Are you headed to this individual? Or are they headed to you? Because the eight of cups with this nine cups could talk about wish fulfillment Bliss acceptance is needed when we're trying to let go of something, especially if anyone in the situation was a bit emotionally immature or just usually has a hard time, you know, dealing with the emotions. Here is head over heart sort of situation. The truth that you seek, you will find. Someone may also communicate and or be set in healthy boundaries when it comes to a return. Because if you go to me or if you walked away from a situation, and I don't know why I get Virgo. Um, the truth comes or a, a boundary set, okay? This could also be clarity. And hopefully we're not cutting anything off. But I feel the aces are given through the divine. The pages are usually messengers. And you are going to find some sort of truth. And maybe through a stranger or a person that offers some sort of information to you. That could be the offer within itself. Now at the bottom of the deck, two aces okay two aces definitely talk about new beginnings and i can say for the um usually it's the the hermit right the with the heart not the god damn it it yeah it is it is sometimes what card am i thinking about yeah the hermit is sometimes the hermit in this card which is connected to virgo sorry about that you guys now i know that if you have a life path um that's similar to hermit energy or isolation, or it just involves you doing things alone for the most part, it's necessary to stay grounded and to not get too detached from the emotion, to be in the mind, drawing the sword on everything that no longer serves us because sometimes it can pan out to just not be healthy, okay? Well, we're going to see what this new thing is because when something ends, something new begins, and we're going to check out and see what that is, okay? Okay, well, <laughs> okay, wait, hear me out. All right, so definitely want to ground ourselves, okay? Now, this talks about time. The timing, I feel, happens in August, right? That's settled. We're going to dig into that. The tarantula is usually an energy of protection, and the panther is my purge card. So some of y'all are going to be staying inside because of the foolishness that's happening on the outside. Where this ace of pentacles in this doorway could represent an opportunity or just stand in the house child now wherever this is she's been there before so if you wondering now this is messy somebody really tripping wondering if <laughs> the answer is yes um because <laughs> wherever uh she got this rose from sweetheart she done been to this house um or she's been to this place and I don't know if it's some of you, maybe y'all reincarnated back into this world and whatever this situation is, you've mastered it already. So it really is no reason to have like, I don't know, a temperamental reaction to it because you've experienced it before. Some of you that may be having, you know, a, a situation of frustration where you got to walk away over and over again. And this thing keep this thing keeps happening and you don't know why. And you, you may need some clarity, uh, Group 4. It, it seems like, you know, I would, take a, I would take a stab that there's something that could be repeating. Um, 
And it's frustrating every time, even though if you think about it right now, it keeps repeating. So the panther talks about a purge of the unnecessary, okay? The panther won't stand to see our growth or energy stagnant. Instead, it pounces into our lives and causes all kind of havoc. And see, I don't know if it's something that fate is trying to draw out of you and you don't deal with it, you just go retreat. I don't know if that's the perfect combination, like that's exactly how you should handle it, or if that's why it keeps repeating itself. So it also says uh, the ultimate intention of bringing us toward more fulfilling lives. Okay, so that's that eight of cups to the nine of cups and possibly even ten cups. But instead of that 10th cup, like the happy ending, you get this sword with a crown. So it's like you may not get like all those things you wanted or that relationship that you wanted, but it's some level of mastery and this crown and like a peace of mind. And I'm, I'm just noticing that the roses are coming from source with the aces and she has some roses, but yet it's like I'm starting over again. Um, as this page of cups. Now, if this isn't a messenger telling you to leave something alone that's protecting you because you are going to snap, huh, it is definitely um, a return of things that you've lost, right? So let's see what we got. It's unexpected, uncomfortable, and sometimes feel devastating. But after all the dust clears, it's easy to see the panther's wisdom at work. We've all been through these experiences and they've made us better people. Trust that the panther's journey always leads to a brighter place. When in balance, it talks about brave and productive. When out of balance, it's self-destructive and somebody is going to turn away and leave to protect their peace um, if this behavior comes out. Okay, so I can just tell you that now. So if you care about this person, the situation, this job, honey, I, it's giving last straw energy and they're going to draw that sword and I don't know. Now, some others of us that have become frustrated with, are we there yet type energy? I feel like spirit has, is giving the map and the hermit is, you know, walking, trying to discover. But if this web is the repeat um, in fate, I think this sword could just dismount to this web. But it, that's also that destructive energy to where... We don't figure something out. We just get like emotionally sensitive and like just damage it and wreck it. Like kind of like self-sabotage. Instead of figuring something out, just turn it up. So be mindful of that. But uh, the, the tarantula represents being at a crossroad and it also represents claiming life's purpose. The tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream. Did not see hello. Um, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose Dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. And that's why the nine of cups aren't together. It's like what we need to leave alone is this. And the offer is here. And this um, advice, it seems. The tarantula hovers, patient and calm, like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. So there's an offer possibly coming and a choice with the tarantula like hovering over this choice. It's like, I know you can do this. And I feel that it may even be in walking away or letting go for some of you. Okay. Now, when in balance, follow your intuition. When out of balance, hesitating and over intellectualizing so to bring into balance daily journaling may be favorable okay so let's see what else we have here for the spider i just want to fix this because i don't want it to cut off on you guys there we are okay so now with the spider the spider is usually a protective energy okay and i felt like with the lion coming out it could be significant to leo or the present, you know, um, Leo season, okay? But we have patient, regal, and a complete master. So that's why I say you do come out with a crown at the end of this. So there's a mastery of something, the epitome of peace and strength, okay? That's what we're working on 
which does give that king of cups energy of learning to control the waters or acceptance okay and spirit is like you don't got nothing to do with the king of cups well sometimes that is the path of the journey to find uh contentment and sometimes acceptance and even you know in the nine cups is acceptance and contentment and it could lead to bliss but if nothing else it's a temperament from a reaction or being temperamental so the lion is a master of the fire element and the living mascot of self-transformation. So some of you may be changing your perspective through a situation. Um, this dedication inspires some and intimidates others. Therefore, the lion is respected by all but known intimately by few. Some mistake the lion as hard to access or aloof, yet those with a uh, keener eye know better. Lions are observant, stealth, and precise in their words and actions. They do not waste energy or resources. This card reminds us that self-mastery is available to all, no matter where our quest begins. Now, I knew she was looking at this man, or whoever this is in this Eight of Cups. I knew that she was looking at him with a little bit of side eye. And it kind of seems like there may be someone in this situation that is intimidated and uncomfortable by somebody just choosing to mind their business. Like, this person is totally going their own way, right? And probably even tried to walk away. And it seemed like that ignited somebody because it struck their nerve or their ego. Um, because she's looking a little bothered by this Eight Cups. And either it's saying to accept the Eight of Cups, which is accept the L's, the lessons, because we don't take losses. Accept that you can't take everything with you instead of you know, lashing out to life, I feel like something new comes when we complete the lesson, you know, or when we choose the right answer from multiple choice. And the cards are showing that the correct answer from multiple choice is the path of least resistance, you know, um, or something like that. So when I look at the, the spider, I can't help but to think of the web, of course. And it, it's kind of like the Wheel of Fortune or Fate. So for some of you, again, if it's the Wheel of Fortune, it's like the transits. And we got the lion here. It's like Leo season for some of us. It just talks about the energy stirring up around this time. And how for you to not get distracted and remember that you are on a road to self-mastery. That we aren't going to get caught up in things that are, you know, not for our highest good or whatever. Now, with the spider... This is the creator of prosperity. This is through life's work and dharma. Now, didn't the tarantula say focus on your dharma? And then here is like the advice, the crown, the clarity, okay? And it's like, oh my gosh, if you're, you're, you are connected, uh, group four, I feel like to the gateway portal, whatever constellations or legacy behind uh, this time, okay? The lions, what is it? Orion, Osiris, uh, all everybody up there <laughs> that's connected to uh, this magnificent portal. I feel like you have some sort of connection there. And it's like something very ancient and special is trying to advise you during this time that it's a special time for you to do something special and don't get distracted by being basic. I ain't going to hold you. That's what it's saying. Um, no, it also says... It's the greatest gift, okay? And the greatest gift of the spider is weaving the thread of Dharma into a vast, intricate web that supports the spider, okay? And those around it. So both financially and spiritually, it, um, it is hard work. But the spider neither tires nor is impatient. This card reminds us creativity is everywhere. Be process-oriented rather than results oriented and soon your work becomes like the weaving of a magical priceless tapestry abundance follows so here's the abundance that is to follow and i just feel that something may be going to happen I'm not gonna hold you and this thing that's going to happen is like you working on what's those games where they stack stuff up you okay let's just say you put puzzle pieces together. 2,000 pieces, right? The minute you finish that last piece, 
the table break or something goofy happens or you realize that you your deadline to turn the puzzle in was two weeks ago right that is fair for somebody to like want to you know what i mean the cards are saying don't do that because whatever this is is faded one step is going to lead to two and whatever this um I, i'm not going to say unfortunate but whatever this like annoyance is or distraction is it's not that big of a deal no more than whatever it is you're trying to do is the big deal the big deal is how you react in a situation and knowing that you test your magic you know what i'm saying like if something doesn't go correctly one way or traditionally one way um if this relationship or this person don't pan out the way you want it instead of caring negatively or being emotionally distracted by it to keep your focus on inner peace and getting this crown. To know that it's a higher power that governs you, that's watching you, and that knows more than you, and it's telling you whatever this is ain't shit, so keep going. But if you don't keep going and you get caught up in it, you're going to show that your higher power, your higher self, and your third dimensional self that you are easily caught up um, and distracted into normal things, and you're just going to be basic. That's what it's saying. I don't know. You don't want to be basic, group four. Okay? So, we are going to pull your clarifiers for your zodiac cards, Virgo, Cancer, Taurus. Okay, so we are not going to be basic. We're going to get that crown. We're going to get that offer. And yeah, it probably sucked some other stuff. But it gets less sucky toward the end, okay? So, let's see what we have here for my signs but she was baby she was major side eyeing um <laughs> whoever that is that walked away baby your ancestors say leave the people alone don't side eye them let them go okay so we're gonna start with virgo cancer taurus let's see what we have y'all for the collective we're gonna start with virgo okay watching all right okay Mm. Okay. <laughs> we got Scorpio here a little bit. We got a lesson we're learning a little bit. We got an offer a little bit or something we need to let go of. The high priest is saying, I'm not going to guide you or tell you what it is you want to know or take you to where you need to be until you give me this, right? Type deal. The crocodile is a watcher and it's like watch until it's time to strike. Okay. It's also lurking, okay, where if it's not you, it may be someone in the environment that is not speaking to you. You're not speaking to them, but they are still watching you. There may be no communication. I do see the Ten of Swords, okay? For some of you, it could even be a person that you worked with in the past, okay? Or it involves your work, all right? This is where, I don't know... It's like a chill out card too, for some of us that may have negative reactions or trust issues, the crocodile is kind of telling us to chill. Somebody is also an opportunist. So if you have an opportunist in your environment that sees the potential in you, they are watching you. Let me see if this is good or bad. Mm, I think it's karmic because I've seen Scorpio and it doesn't have to be, but it's gonna sting. I feel that somebody or you is going to sting because they are just tired of taking L's. They're tired of taking losses. And this is a bad time to be fucking with this person because I know exactly how that feels. Like if you, you could just say, normally you are a very well put together, balanced individual, right? But then it's just like sometimes where you don't feel like playing or it's a person that's in a phase of their lives where they are focused and sitting and waiting on something and people coming in their environment, you know, distracting them or not being of aid at all. Um, they're going to give you the business. So it's like, just be mindful with that. All right. Now, for others of you that you don't have any specific situation that don't resonate with that, the crocodile itself, right, a very super cool spirit animal to have it is a water animal of course and it's currently in the water kind of chilling again watching but it represents resting cooling off collecting energy submerging 
The crocodile reminds us to step back from the external world and turn inward. Now is not the time for decisions, actions, or discussions. The crocodile mantra is wait. This doesn't mean lying around hoping life's challenges will disappear. The crocodile is much smarter than that. It means intentionally withdrawing, like the Eight of Cups, gathering our awareness, observing, and building energy. Fill up the vital reserve so your next move comes from a place of wisdom and power. So this is sitting back until it's time to strike. Boom, because I did see the high priestess, and I did see that offer. So the high priestess is going to tell you when to move, and it's like as soon as you move, you're going to strike. And I don't know what you're striking, but it could be gold because there is the Ace of Pentacles. Now, Cancer, let's see what we have for you. We got the tower here, Cancer. What's going on? The Seven of Cups, the End of Confusion. All right. I also saw the rabbit, if you resonate with the rabbit as a spirit animal. Now, the Page of Pentacles. See, this is good for you guys because it's consistent. Sometimes the Page of Pentacles talks about delays. Other times it talks about habits. Now, I do believe when we were going through your cards, when we got to this section, it did talk about habits. And it's the spirit God was reminding us not to get distracted by something. All right. Now, the page can sometimes have an energy like the star where we in the mirror, focusing on our body image, competing things that are outside of us and I know this is a normally cancer energy so it could also be someone in cancer's environment okay if there's a relationship involved I feel that this this person or this situation has high potential but high potential relationships from my experience could lead to just being that so I wouldn't put too much on it and that's why it's kind of like coming in as the page of cups and not a really solid offer because it's just potential you know, it's friendly. It could be friendship. It could be the beginning phase of something, but it's not really solid. And it shouldn't be. I mean, unless you are two people who are like, what do they say? I'm dating with intentions and I have like certain goals and certain things that I want. Then you would communicate them whenever you guys are comfortable. But I don't see this as that. Now, it's funny that I said the page sometimes has the energy of the star because here is the star where we're back to. Uh, talking about, I don't want to say superficial, but just be mindful of not overseeing appearances, your looks, you know, body, body shaming and stuff like that. Somebody could be looking at your pictures. Okay. Um, <laughs> here we have the father of cups with the fool. So if there are um, any, what do they call it? Dirty offers. I feel that this individual could be more into the physical, not spiritual, and maybe non-committal as well as financially, they don't got no money because it's this jack of all trade energy and it's not a master of many, it's a master of none, where they only reach certain levels of potential and they don't exceed past that. Okay, let's get, let me get one more because I don't want to be dogging my page of pentacles. For some of you, it's an alliance. So it's about you and another person because I got another page. Okay, let me see. And others of you, it's either the way you or this person thinks. Because I saw, I saw the habits and the thinking and the emotional immaturity that could be distracting. Whew, I had to bend way over to get that. Now, you got the death card in the reverse. Um, could be Scorpio energy. And something is not ending and something is not changing. And somebody is not letting go. And see, this is not clear. You got an entanglement, but you also have friendship, okay? You have harmony and hurt. You have love and pain. What is else? Look, what is else? Somebody grows through it, though, okay? Unless there's a, a situation that involves a child, uh, I want to say, and a parent, and a job, honey, because usually the mother of pentacles is like, a single parent could also be an administrator that takes care of a lot. So you could be responsible for people. And look at this is the page. So if the if the page was, you know, here um, and then there's some sort of transformation, change or loss. And now I don't know if somebody this is weird. OK, so we were talking about relationships and then it jumps to possible adoption. Um, 
Well, I mean, you could be adopted into a new friendship, a new family, or something like that if there are any abandonment issues. Now, I know mostly, most of the time, cancers are the ones that adopt people. So there could be like an alliance or an addition to your circle, your home, or something like that. I still remember the, it said to not allow, you know, distractions, not calling your new project, habit, whatever the case, or child, anybody to be a distraction. Um, it stands still to think and focus um, on your goals. So to not, to not let things come in and distract you. I mean, it did say that. So it was like, focus on your habits. Now, some of you, there may be unexpected income coming in so you will be like working through the night and losing sleep but it's going to pay off because it seems like those of you that chose group four are getting some sort of tangible reward for your work as well as your ability to maneuver through this energy like virgo or you know stack one within stack four <laughs> is advised to wait until the right time to strike for it to be favorable you guys is more so being diligent, working through the night, like getting it done, focusing on your habits, focusing on the details. And also when it comes to the negativity and the BS, the devil is in the details. And idle mind is the devil's workshop. Stay out your feelings. And that's very good energy. Um, <laughs> that's, I mean, energy. That's very good advice for cancer. And see how it's, it's so significant. You guys have had two to three pages. So it does talk about alliances, but nothing is really taken off. Um, it may even talk about unexpected feelings or emotions where, you, where it was a friendship or potential and somebody now feels differently in a situation and maybe a lover. Um, so let's get to uh, Taurus. What you got for us, Taurus? Taurus is healing, child. What are y'all healing from, child? You got the frog. Let me get one more. But to, oh, super cute. You got the frog and the unicorn. So let's see. Um, the frog is, as you can see with the rain, about healing. This is coming from a higher up, okay, or you could be a guide for some. And because you are a guide or just like a source of support, who going to support you? You know, you healing everybody else. Where do you sit, take a break, and heal, right? The frog represents clearing, cleansing, and healing. The frog and the water element are almost inseparable. The frog spends its first months of life entirely within his healing element and then emerges to rest on land. But no matter how earthly the frog becomes, its need for cleansing and rejuvenation is regular. Frogs tend to become overworked and undernourished, so it's vital that such sensitive creatures practice self-care. This card serves as a reminder that water helps us cleanse, forgive, and release. Time to dive in. Frogs aren't meant to carry a heavy load. So when in balance, clear energy and enthusiasm for life. When out of balance, depleted, running on empty. Okay. And so the unicorn is one of the spirit animal cards in this particular deck and talks about reconnecting to higher wisdom and divinity. It's di and see, that's cute because it said, we know you earthy. We know you grounded. We know you practical and you got this. But there's still an aspect of you that reconnecting to a higher wisdom or divinity could help. It says it is difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Now, is that practical or not? So it's like, is your down-to-earth, practical, realistic side interfering with your spiritual growth? Mmm. Okay. It says that the mind answers maybe or it could be or no way. Either one of those. This is very, um, this is the very, what? This very contemplation explains our relationship with divinity and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. We think about a higher power and our minds hesitate between yes, no, and maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn card appears and wakes us up to curiosity about the higher self and the divine. And that is super cool because that would also explain starting out with this eight cups. And I said it was on somebody, it was someone on a spiritual journey to find some answers about a mystery. 
okay? <laughs> so I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, group four, definitely appreciate you for tuning in. Until next time.